Hi, I'm Naomi Nachman and welcome to Sunnyside Up. Hi everyone, I am here with Khumi Borenstein, otherwise known as The Ice Life on Instagram and I'm so excited to have you on the set, Khumi. Thank you for having me. I'm thrilled to have you on the set because you are a winner of the Shibulim challah baking contest. I am. Well, I had to create an original challah recipe using the Shibulim whole wheat flour. So this is actually a take on my mother's recipe. I just changed it around a little bit. I cut out some of the sugar and added honey to make it healthier. I also added a couple more eggs because the whole wheat flour can be a little dense sometimes. Okay, I wanted right. it to be fluffy and light. The flour is very, very fine, so it doesn't make such a heavy challah, but it worked out to be extremely fluffy and light and my kids didn't even realize it was whole wheat. So that's okay. a score. That's always a win when you can sneak in some whole wheat flour into your kids' diet. Okay, so shall we make challah? Yes, we should. All right, let's do it. I like to start with the wet ingredients, um, okay. the water, and then the yeast. I'll do the water, you do the yeast. So that's instant dry yeast. Um, and then I'm gonna put in the sugar and the honey because that's how the yeast gets. Sugar to... and honey. Now sugar makes the yeast grow. It makes it a it's, yeast is a live active ingredient and sugar fuels the yeast and what makes it grow. Is it important to mix that? You don't have to. Very often if I don't have time, I'll just dump everything in. Because it's instant yeast, it works very, very quickly. So you can see there's already bubbles starting to form. You want it to froth. Yeah, but it's because it's instant, it's already there it, as soon as you mix it. I just want to share a tip with everyone. If it doesn't froth, throw it out. It means there's something wrong with the yeast. Yeah, so I have the eggs right here. Four eggs, great. Um, half a cup of oil. Great. And then I'm going to put in the flour. So the good thing about this is that it's a three pound bag and my recipe calls for three pounds, so you don't have to measure anything out. You just have to pour the whole lot in. I'm getting the mixing going. So if you have a mixer, you don't have to worry about this. I like I could just go in with my hand. Go for it. It makes it a little easier. That's why she adds the flour. <laughs> <laughs> you could probably add the salt now. Okay. Right there. Are we using, is this pink Himalayan salt? Yeah. <gasps> You don't have to use pink Himalayan salt, but it definitely brings out the flavor. So I like to actually leave the dough a little bit to rest. when it's Once it's come together just like this, leave it for about two minutes. At this point, because everything's mixed in, it's much easier to do on the counter. So you can go ahead and tip it out. I'm gonna put these gloves. Right onto the flour. And I'm just kind of scraping the bottom with my hands as well. I mean, this is such a nice dough, seriously. like. It's yeah, when it, you'll see when it rises, it, it, it's really easy to work with and really soft. So is it, should be, it's a drop sticky, so what do I do? You can keep adding a little flour, but when it rises, the stickiness kind of disappears. Yeah. I have to say that tiny little bit that I added onto the table before I sprinkled, then just that little bit now, made a huge difference. This is great. This is perfect to leave it to rise, um, and then once it's risen, you can just knead it again to make sure that it looks a little smoother than that. So you can dump it back in a bowl. Um, and then I like to use a plastic bag, Oh. a little bit of spray. This one is canola oil spray, just That's like this. That's a great tip. Um, then it doesn't stick to any towels, it doesn't stick to anything. It, it's perfect like this. Put it in a warm place and leave it to rise. So we let this rise and now we're ready to... Read it. Woohoo! Okay. You can see how the bag just came off so easily. Yeah, it literally I thought it would stick. And it no, does. right off and there's no, you've not lost any color. So I'm gonna tip it out onto the counter. I'll just put a little bit of flour first so that it doesn't stick and make a mess. I think challah making is a little is bit messy, but that's okay. <laughs> I, I love baking challah and making dough. It's great to do with the kids as well. Okay. So I'm just gonna give it a quick knead, but you can see can that, touch really, that yeah, it's oh, really, beautiful. really beautiful. So with this recipe, I divide it into four and I get four challahs out of it. How many strands do you like to do? Six. Oh, you're professional. <laughs> I just do four. So I'm going to go for a round challah because it's that time of year, or Rosh Hashanah, and they're really easy to make as well. Okay. So I have four pieces over here and I'm going to show you how I do this one. And I'm going to do easy. mine with six. I'm not a perfectionist and I'm definitely not a professional, <laughs> but I just like, Maybe I like if it's easy, keep it simple. So once it's baked, it doesn't really matter how, if it looks too perfect because it's going under the challah cover and then we're eating it. So. <laughs> That's true. So I'm going to show you this really cool 
challah. I have four over here, and I'm just making it into like almost like a weave, very close together. And then you do an under and an over. So the under one goes over, the under one goes over, the under one goes over, and the under one goes over. And now you just go back the way. I've got a whole different technique that I'm going to show you. I can't wait. Now we're going back again. Until we basically reach the point where you really can't anymore, at which point I just... Tuck it under. Yep, twist it and tuck it. And there you're done. I'm going to do six strands. So I put three going in one direction and three in another direction and I'm going to make it like a lattice. Okay, so the middle one goes under like this. And it's like a weave also. Okay. See how it goes over and under and over and under? Okay. So then I now braid it. And even, I'm not such a perfectionist, and if it's a little short, just you can pull on it. And then, I tuck it under, and I have like a basket weave. That's so cool. Just, and I spin it and like compress it down a little bit. I love making round colors because they're so simple and they look so like professional. And like, how much work was that? I know, it was nothing. <laughs> it was like nothing. So, we're going to let this rise for 15 minutes, then we're going to brush it with egg, then we're going to top it, and then off to the oven. So we've got some in the oven, which are still cooking, and we have these all ready to go. Yep, and I'm going to let you taste one. Yay. But sometimes we need to freeze things in advance if we're like pre-cooking before Yom Tov. So I'm just going to show you a really cool trick how to freeze them. Okay. A really easy way. So you just take a Ziploc bag, put the challah in. You're going to do it up semi, not all the way. Yeah. And then... Out of our magic a straw. straw. I've never, I never knew the trick to freezing challah. My challah is just never good after it's been frozen. You put the straw in until it's almost all the way closed. So you just have a little hole for the straw. And you can see that there's no air in there at all. Freeze it like this, take it out, warm it up, and it tastes like fresh. Oh my God, now I'm gonna try that. That's brilliant. So I pop the challah in. So like I'm gonna use say two challahs this week and two go in the freezer for next week. Okay, so I throw, close it most of the way. I'm gonna pop in my straw. Finish closing it like that. Mm -hmm. Am I doing this right now? Yes. Inhale. <laughs> well I think done. I may have inhaled the sesame seed. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really great tip, Khumi, but now it's time to, to eat them, yes. We're taking them out of the bag because we wanna eat these. Okay. Why don't you do the honors? Okay. I just want to show everyone. It's not as dark as I would have thought it would have been from the whole wheat flour, which is nice. Yeah, because the Shabalim whole wheat flour is very, very fine, so it doesn't have such a dark color. I love it. It smells so good. My mouth is watering. All right, I'm going to go wash because I want to eat this right now. <laughs> Let's go. This is why she was the winner. <laughs> this is amazing! Oh Thank my god! Thank you. I need some hummus to dip it into. I can't wait for Rosh Hashanah to make this challah. It's got the honey, it's got all the flavors, the sweetness, the shape. And it's healthy. And it's healthy. Delicious. All right. Thanks, Khumi, so much for coming onto the set. I me. really appreciate you coming to be on Sunny Cider. And to get Khumi's recipe, and more recipes like this, go to kosher.com.
and then we're gonna eat. Hi, I'm Naomi Nachman, and this is kosher.com. What am I saying? This is side up. Okay, that was a practice. Should I skip this time? Hey, I'm Naomi Nach. Hey. I'm, both, I'm just doing it so you can go back and forth. Well, you can use that. What am I saying? Now look up. Look up here, like this.